Uh, back in 1975, when I come home from the Marine Corps, I did a little work around town working with uh, actually a friend of the family. Uh, he had a little construction company, did a lot of asphalt uh, driveways and, and things like that, you know. And so, at any rate, I was working for him, kind of relaxing after four years in the Marine Corps. And he gave me this old concrete mixer. That would have been, for sure, 1975. And so he brought it home, took the engine off of it, and had that laying there, and by the edge of his shed, and he told me I could have this. Now, I needed to pour some footings for a retaining wall. I built my daughter's a house down at the lake in 2017 or 18, something like that. So I went ahead and put a small half horsepower motor, third horsepower motor, and a 40 to one gear head, something. We poured that footing, did a good job, you know, at, uh, but it couldn't work at its full capacity because you could tell this drum is really, really large. So uh, it's been on the back burner since I finished that project, always with the mind of what can I do to make this thing operate at full capacity. Right now, I've got to build something for the missus, I've got to pour some piers, and there's no time like the present, so we're going to go ahead and complete this project now, and hopefully uh, get it to where it'll actually function and work. Now you saw the size of the drum, but take a look, it's got uh, a, a set of uh, uh, 15s or 16 inch uh, wheels and tires on the back. Um, I loaned it to a guy, and he brought it back with those new tires on it, which was pretty cool, I appreciated that, but uh, it's a pretty substantial, pretty heavy duty machine. And of course, it had the compartment back here. It had that uh, one cylinder motor in it. And of course, the never did have the back door, but it has that flap right there that turns down and shields and protects the, uh, the motor from the weather. Now, I've got some video somewhere on my camera of whenever I converted this way back um, in 2017 or 18, you know, with that small gear head and that fractional horsepower motor. Um, it did turn out to where it was not adequate. I did not like it at all, even though it did function. And of course, this is what I converted to whenever I had the small fractional horsepower gear head sitting here and that was 110 volt electric driven and so I'm going to go ahead and use this right here and I just had to size the pulley to where I could still come up with the same calculations. Now because my tractors uh, the ones that I'm planning on using don't have a clutch they're hydrostatic and whenever you engage the part takeoff it engages with the jolt even at an idle and so there's going to be a shock factor there. If this thing needs to be started and you've got a full load on it, you're putting a tremendous shock on that entire uh, drive train, so to speak. So what I've done, I'm, I'm going ahead and powered this all up, or I'm going to power it up, um, and then with this guy right here, it's off of an old international something, or some kind of a depth adjustment, I don't know what. I'm going to be able to use this that I've adapted already, cut some ends off of it, and all that stuff. I'm going to make a, a trigger over here where I can actually pick this up and then uh, increase and decrease the tension by using this off of a Cub Cadet that I trimmed down and that's going to weld to a bracket on the back side of this so and it'll be in alignment with the pulley right here so that all I have to do to adjust belt tension is put pressure on and slowly put the load against the now spinning part takeoff and everything instead of having that shock of a drive. So it's very very heavy, heavily loaded with five, four, five bags of cement or whatever, which this is definitely capable of, I'll be able to slowly engage that instead of that shock. So this looks like a little, a little weird, a little overkill, but you know what? I like to build stuff with things that I have in stock. I don't have to buy anything. I could put up a, a tensioner on here that you just put a spring on and it just holds all the time. Uh, but it's like, I want to do this with no load whenever I turn it on. And so this is about the best thing that I come up with. So right now I'm in the process of figuring this all out, getting this bolted in. I'm gonna bolt this in place in case I have to service anything associated with that. Take a, two bolts out and just remove this whole assembly. And so then I have free access instead of welding it in place permanently. Welding in place would minimize the ability to get in for access. Okay, now this is the uh, the out, outward piece of steel that I've actually uh, sandwiched, you know, this thinner material right here, which is still 16 gauge. It's pretty thick material, it might be 14 gauge. But the weak thing that I have are these pillow block bearings. These are very light duty blower bearings, but there really is not much of a, a load on it, I don't believe, especially if I've got the alignment correct and everything like that. They're still a light duty bushing, a bronze bushing instead of an actual ball bearing or roller bearing. I've got my eyes peeled for a set of pillow blocks that is a 5 8 and if, whenever I come up with a set of cast steel pillow block bearings with replaceable inserts, I'll go ahead and change these guys out to those much heavier duty, then I won't have to worry about it. You can see I've got a thrust collar on it here to where it can't pull out of the engagement inside on the drive head and uh, we should be good to go. Now, this is not quite complete. I've got to cut this off, and I've also got to weld brackets. I'm going to increase stability by welding brackets right here, up to this guy right here, 
on both sides and that's going to hold everything from vibrating. I don't think it's going to vibrate a whole lot anyway, but I just want to add that little bit of security to it. Okay guys, we're, uh, we're just about done. You see there's the braces are on the platform out here to give stability to the, the par takeoff input. You can see everything for adjusting the belt tension is done. I've taken a, a lever off of an old farm implement and I've used that for my, my uh, tensioner for the idler pulley. You see how every, everything is loose right here right now. That's so whenever we start it up there will be no load on the par takeoff shaft um, except for the drag of the 40, uh, 40 to 1 gear head which is going to be absolutely minimal because it just takes fingertips to turn that over there. Once I start it up and have it sitting there at a, a fast idle I'll be able to loosen this guy up right here and just drop this guy right down and tighten this up right here and let her go ahead and go. Now if you take a look your idler pulley goes on top right here because if you think about it this thing is going to rotate this direction here and so this the work is being done by this pulley this part of the belt. In other words this part of the belt is dragging this way to make the rotation counterclockwise okay so you always put your idler on the area that on the half of the pulley that's wanting to push because obviously a belt and a pulley cannot push it has to pull so your idler goes on the on the unloaded side of your of your drive belt okay how do you figure what belt that is now i wanted this a little bit bigger because i wanted to have slack in it remember i talked about not wanting to start it under load so I wanted it to be just a little bit bigger. What you do, you figure center to center of shaft to shaft and multiply that times two. So whatever this dimension is here, multiply that times two. That's going to give you roughly the top half of each of the two pulleys, bottom and top. So the center to center times two, write that number down. Then you have to figure their circumference of one pulley and then divide that circumference in half. So it's one half of the circumference of this pulley plus two times the center to center dimension plus one half the diameter of the second pulley. And all of those added together is going to give you a rough dimension to figure what belt you're going to use. If you do it this way here, then you can go to the auto parts store or your supplier and you can buy three belts. You can buy the size that you figure, buy an inch longer and an inch shorter, and then tell them that you know you're only going to use one of the belts but because you have a variable, you want to bring two of those back as soon as you figure out which one's going to work. And it's kind of crude, but you know, it still works. Or you can take a half inch rope for a half inch belt and you can take a half inch rope and just wrap it around the two pulleys and then just hold it right in the center and then go ahead and measure the length that it took to go around those. That'll get you doggone close too. That'll get you within an inch or so too. So you can do either measurement, sharpen up on your math skills, do it with math, or just use a rope. I haven't cut this off here yet. I will eventually, but I just left that long for right now. And you can see here's my prior takeoff shaft here. This will come right over to the tractor. I'll back up as close as I can, and it should turn this direction right here, which gives me the direction that I want to turn over there. I couldn't find anything in my pile of stuff to go to, uh, to my standard inch and three-eighths six-spline shaft. So what I did, if you take a look here, you see I got a... Uh, don't look at that well. That's kind of nasty well. But anyway, I took um, an old power takeoff shaft, the small power takeoff shaft, like these here. This here's a 15 spline one inch shaft, but it had this kind of a connection on the end of it. And so what I did, I cut all of that stuff off of there, and I took this part here, which is a standard one just like this, and I cut these two ears completely off of it, like this right here. Then I took this to the milling machine, I set this on the milling machine, and I machined both surfaces perfectly flat. Then I was able to take that part takeoff shaft and made it up to this guy right here and welded in place. It's not a professional weld by no means, but I tell you what, I'm, like you always hear all the time, it's going to hold. At least it ought to. If it don't, I can always say it should have. But at any rate, that's what I ended up making. And again, this does not have a tremendous stress on it, so it should be fine. Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. I went ahead and greased all the bearings. I greased all the way around the perimeter of the drive gear. And uh, we're in the unloaded position right here. But the pulleys are a little bit rusty, so it should grab and rotate, but there's still no load condition. So uh, let's take a look, see what happens. See, there's no load, so any amount of weight in the drum, it's not going to rotate whenever I start in no load condition. So far so good, everything looks good. I 
I've got a mark on it right here where I'm going to be able to count the rotation. So I'm going to run this up the wide open throttle, make sure nothing comes apart, and then I'm going to go ahead and set my timer and count the rotation. Remember, my target is roughly 22 RPM as per all the calculations. Okay, now my target was uh, was 22 RPM, but I want to turn it just a little bit less than that. And I actually got 20 RPMs at full uh, 540 RPM input. That's just about on the money. I miscalculated just a little bit, but uh, you know, what the heck, you just got all this old stuff and it's kind of rough measurements anyway. I'm kind of happy, I'm kind of satisfied. I think it's going to function the way it needs to, and it's definitely going to hold, you know, the four or five bags are at the very minimum what this thing is designed to hold. This is a much bigger tub than any of those little bitty guys, you know. So I think it's going to work. I'm going to go ahead and run this for a little while, you know, make sure all the everything gets lubricated real well. And then uh, before long, we're going to be uh, mixing some concrete for some piers. Well, this thing is definitely a substantial mixer compared to, uh, compared to normal. I've got this unlocked now. So there you go. That's how you can just rotate. Oh, this thing goes all the way around. You can mix on this side. You can mix on that side over there. Uh, of course, now with the tractor over here, we're not going to want to. But uh, it does go all the way around. And it's wobbly because it's uh, on this car dolly down here. But this will be the angle that you typically mix at right here. Bring your wheelbarrow right up and just dump right into the wheelbarrow and go right back up and lock it in whatever position you want. And there it stays right there. You can see why it's wobbling. I just have it on that car dolly down there uh, just so I could actually roll it around in the shop by hand, you know what I mean? Because that front end has actually got quite a lot of tongue weight, you know, and it doesn't have a, a roller jack or anything like that. Well, like I said, guys, unfortunately, my calculation was off just a little bit, but I'm not sure that I had it fully wide open. I was just looking at the tack at a little bit of an angle, and so I still had a, a, just another 100 RPM or so to get all the way up there. So that might have made the difference. Don't know. Not making excuses. Doesn't matter. My target is about 17 or 18 revolutions per minute anyway, and this is well within that at a, at a very high idle, not, not necessarily wide open. But still, I'm going to have so much power with this power takeoff in this tractor instead of a fractional horsepower or even a, a one horsepower motor, you know, running the gearhead like I had before. Before, I could only run a, maybe two bags at the very, very most uh, and a little bit of Portland added to it. And that's all I could because that little, that little power head, that little motor just didn't have the oomph, you know what I mean? But I guarantee you, that little old Kubota out there is going to turn this thing with however many bags we can, we can get in it. I guarantee you that. If it don't, well, you know, I'll be surprised. So, hey, you know what? That's all there is to this one here. And uh, this is Trackman 44. <laughs> and I'm out here, guys. I forgot to add, on a side note, this will just buckle right down like this right here. I'll make a new cover for this over here that's obviously removable. This will shed, uh, shed all the weather.